Hi, Karen here part from Karen Coates, and I'm back with part two of Window Builder, which is part five of our memory game Java tutorial. And so basically I'm still in the string editor. I'm going to close this because I don't need to do anything with that right now. But the string editor is where you would actually type in what you want to say. Like if you pop it up, say, uh, click to view game or kick, click to play game. So if you didn't think your window design was very intuitive or you wanted to make it more accessible, you could add the tooltip text so that when someone hovers over that spot, it tells them what they need to do. That's what a tooltip text is for. And it's kind of handy. So that's pretty much all you do there in just the basic spots of it. And if I expand layout, you can see the choice. You have a choice for your columns, for your H gap, which is your horizontal gap between columns, and then your rows, and your V gap, which is your vertical gap or space between rows. And your columns or your rows have to have a number. You can put numbers in both, but they cannot both be zero. One of them can be zero, the other one cannot. So, and because this is a single cell right here, it's just one column and no rows. But if I were to click on something else in this picture, which would be like the column panel itself, it shows a grid layout. As you can see, it has no columns and three rows. Now we can see, obviously there are actually four columns, but the minimum specification you need to make is to say that it has three rows, or you could have said four columns. And the H gap is just the four pixels that are between the columns or the rows. And that's what that means. And then for, so let's go back to selecting an individual cell here. I want to show you what you can do to add code to make it actually do something. And what you do for that is there's a little green little C right here and it says show events. That's my tooltip text that popped up when I hovered on it and left my mouse on it. So when I click it, there's all these various options. We got Ancestor and it says what they all can do, all their properties. We've got Component, Hidden, Moved, Resized, Shown. Now we're not going to use most of these items, just saying. But there is something we do want to use and let me move let me move this over here so I can show you. So we want the mouse and then we want clicked because what we want when they're playing the game is for when they click the mouse, we want it to do something. Now, all we can do in the design view is tell it, hey, we want this component, this picture component to do something when we click it. And so if I double click here, unclicked, it will take me back to my source code and it shows me that for picture that it added a mouse listener and there's a new mouse adapter and it says public void mouse clicked and mouse event and it defaults to arguments zero but I'm going to change that to E for event and then within the curly brackets here is where I would go ahead and type what I want it to do when it's clicked. Okay? And so that's one way of looking at the memory game. You can go through and add an event for each individual item. Not the most efficient way in the case of this game. So we're actually not going to do it that way. But I just want to show you that that's an option that you have when you're designing something maybe a little more simple. So we're back to the design page and it shows you if you do choose to add that action or event, it shows you what line in your source code it added that action. So if you go back later and add an action to something else, it'll tell you where in your code it is. It helps you find it real quick. 
And notice there's a little green and white dot, little donut here. That lets us know, hey, you have an action on that. And you have these other options. You have mouse motion. You can really fine tune it. You have mouse wheel. You have property change. And you have vetoable change. So many, many options you have here to add a listener, um, an action listener or an event or something to. Now here we also have the key pressed and key typed and key released. And we also have an input method. And I mean, it really gets down to very detailed, as, as detailed as you need to be. And let's see, hidden, move, resize, shown. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of properties here. And then you also have uh, definitions. You have show advanced properties. And I'm going to go ahead and click show advanced properties to show you what that does. And what it actually did, it's kind of hard to tell at the moment, but you notice that we have that little clicked action added onto that guy. Um, it didn't actually do anything for us, so that's okay. It's been a while since I've used this builder because I went on and did JavaFX, which uses a completely different um, building tool. But this just kind of gives you an idea of window builder and what you can do here and what you can learn here. And it's really user friendly, easy to use. You can add whatever items you want. Like for example, let me shrink this window back down. Let, for our game, we wanted to have another panel right here. So what I'm going to do is go back to the main content pane. And whoops, come back to the design. I double clicked it instead of single clicking. Okay, it just is highlighting the, the grid. So we actually want to go back one level further. We want to go back to the J frame. And that, you can see that selects the window and we want to add a second panel so all i do is click on it and then drag the j panel to where i want it to go and now it didn't go there or it doesn't appear to have gone there and let me show you why that is so under the j frame if we go to the source code and it takes us there when we set the size or set the bounds, this is where we made it. The size, and it's not big enough for what we wanted. And so if you go to the bounds, you can see you have X, Y that tells it where to appear on your screen. How many pixels from the left corner would be X, and how many from the left corner would be Y, the top left corner. And then the width and the height. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the width bigger. We're going to make it 650 and save that. And then we'll go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, the design window. And you can see it's stretched out our J frame. And what we want to do is we want to add next to that panel we already have. <laughs> we want to add a second panel. And so I'm going to click on it again, which is the J panel. And I'm going to drop it where I want it to go, the new J panel. Now, it put it inside my card, which is not where I want it. I want it there next to it. And in order for it to go there, I actually, oh, it's in the non-visual beans. Well, no wonder. OK. So we actually want a second content pane. And so in the source, let me go back here, and I can fix that. So. It kind of just stuck it right here in this random place, which is really strange. We don't want that. So we're going to go to where the memory app set the content pane. It's right here. Content pane, set layout, and we put the grid layout, right? Okay. We're actually going to change this content pane in order to add the other thing. And I will show you that in the memory, in the Christmas memory game so that we don't mess this any further, mess with it any further. I just wanted to visually show you what I'm doing, but it's kind of not cooperating. So we'll just get rid of that for now and we'll close. 
this. And if it asks me if I want to save, no, I don't. So we'll get rid of all that. That was just a quick preview. Okay, thanks for watching. That's long enough for this video. The, the next video, we'll actually get into writing the code. Thanks for watching.